laser tag operators. This is your overview of game management system. By now we've already talked and I've installed your game management software and you have a good understanding of how things work. This is going to be a recap video of how to start over in the event that you need to. As always, when you double click on your game management system icon, it comes up in lockdown mode. To unlock your game management system, click the blue box next to the lockdown, put in the default password of one, and press OK. At this time, as you can see, this is a fresh install of game management system. Nothing is saved into my library, and I have no taggers plugged in or turned on. So, off the screen, I have turned my alpha taggers on, and I know that they're ready to communicate. A couple of things, I do have my radio module plugged in, and it is communicating. I know that by this indication here. It tells me what com, my baud rate, and everything for my game management system radio. If I need to change those settings, say I'm not running on the default channel of radio channel 0, I'm on radio channel 3 or another radio channel, I would go to config. This is where I make those changes. This is the radio channel. That's probably the only thing you should change in this screen unless you are talking directly with me at the time of change. Everything else should be fine. For this example, we're going to use radio channel 0. So I'm going to click apply and save. Now, I have my alpha taggers on and I'm ready to do a scan to add them into the system. So I press scan in the middle underneath main commands. And it lists the two taggers that I have on and they come up in the default group. They are 19 blade and number 17 lucky. At this time, I will go to teams, select the alpha team because they're odd taggers. I'm going to put them on the alpha team. And then I'm going to select assign team. With those taggers on, they're going to say alpha team reported for duty. And they are now assigned to the alpha team and in the game management system. However, they're in the default group. So if I were to close the game management system, they would go away. In order to prevent that problem from happening, I'm going to create a new group. Go to the less than sign and select group 1. Now those new taggers that I just scanned in, 17 lucky, 19 blade, are now in the group 1 on the alpha team. The red S means that it hasn't received a fresh clone yet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my Bravo taggers at this time. Press scan again. 17 and 19 are still on. They're in group 1. I now have 10 flash and 40 dusty. They're in the default group. So I'm going to check the toggle box of group 1 to unselect those taggers. And I'm going to leave dusty and flash selected in group, the default group. I'm going to select Bravo team and assign team. Those taggers now report that they're assigned to the Bravo team. I'm going to go to the less than sign of the Bravo team, or the default group, and I'm going to put them up in group 1. Now I have both sets of taggers scanned in and in group 1. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and double click over group 1, and I'm going to change that name to Elite. Press enter. Now that is what will show up on my live score screen or my final score screen when I use extended desktop mode or right here on the laptop. I do not have an extended desktop hooked up, so I only have the option of screen one. Here it is. Elite laser tag, game in progress, name, blade, lucky, dusty, and flash, kill, kill death ratio. That is how the leaderboard is populated. So now I have my taggers scanned in. Let's talk about game designs. You can have as many game designs as you want. We've already talked about this probably. I'm going to set up my default settings. So I type in default. And this 
is my settings that I normally tell you on the phone. Friendly fire, yes or no? Friendly fire is the ability to shoot your own teammates. We're not going to check that for our default settings. We are going to change from 150 life points down to 100 life points. We're going to leave shields off. We're going to leave shield regeneration. Hit delay, that is an internal timer that prevents the IR sensors on either the head sensors or the tagger sensor from taking a hit. We're going to leave that off. We're going to have unlimited number of respawns. We're going to do an auto respawn for this setup. Referee game, uh, game time call. Referee, as always recommended by me, I always like, unless I'm in a convention center or at a fair, I always do ref game call. And death delay, that gives you extra time to get to a medic box to respawn back into in a uh, tactically designed game. These are all the game settings that are on your tagger. These are all the game settings here on your GMS. Like on the tagger, here's your weapon settings in GMS. We're going to play indoor today and we're going to do an IR range of 40%. On the tagger, it's IR power 1 through 5, 5 being the strongest. In GMS, it's percentages, 20 being the least, 100% being the uh, most. You have sound, military, sci-fi, or silencer. We're going to go ahead and use military sound. You can select your magazine size in five round increments. We're going to go ahead and leave that at 30 magazines. We're going to go ahead and check unlimited magazines. And we're going to go ahead and check auto reload. Now what auto reload does is that last trigger pull, it automatically reloads another set of bullets. They do not have to press the red button. Reload time still applies. We're going to have a reload time of three seconds. You have your fire select full, semi, or burst. We're going to go ahead and go with full auto. Because we're on full auto, this burst setting doesn't matter. Damage, we're going to go ahead and set that down to 10 points of damage. Now we have 10 points of damage to 100 life points. That means 10 points per tagger, or 10 shots per tagger. We're going to go with a cyclic of 700, uh, 650. And we're going to leave our muzzle flash on. That is everything underneath weapon settings. Now we're going to go over global settings. These things normally don't change. Feedback sounds, that's the good kill or tagger eliminated. Arcade sounds, that's the one in a row, two in a row, three in a row. Feedback style, you have adult versus youth. Adult says kill, youth says tagger eliminated. Volume is a selectable volume. You, for one game, you can set it at 20%. For another game, you can set it at 40%. This game, we're going to leave it set at 60%. Ammo box, this is how many magazines they can pick up from an ammo box. Medic box, this is how many health points they can pick up from a medic box. Flag, you have capture or hunt. You're probably only going to use capture. Game box, stay is they can only use a game box one time game box ror ror stands for reset on respawn and full ammo ror is reset on respawn so every time they respawn back into the game they get a full complement of ammo i'm going to set my kill led to two minutes that saves me a little bit of battery life my LEDs are multi. All of your revolution equipment comes with multi LEDs. If you change this to single, you will only have red LEDs shooting out of your taggers. Please do not do so. And backlight of 30%. That is how bright that screen gets when I hold down the black button. So I've made all my changes to my setting. I'm going to click save. I'm going to close this live score screen. I now have a new game type called default. I'm going to go select toggle in my elite group. Now all my taggers have a toggle. I double click on default group. That sends out a clone to my taggers and they say cloning complete. Now I'm ready to do new game and start a game bringing back up my scoreboard because I have it set to scoreboard one. If you do not set it to scoreboard one, it will not show up. So you have your live score screen and your final score screen. You have new game, 
end game ping checks and sees if things are on radially if they are not on radially they will draw a red line through them rf tells the taggers to light up their sensors and give an auditory report back that is the basic things you need to know about game management system and how to set them up a few more things here in this game management 2.0 welcome video if you go to a tagger in a group and right click it you get some options it shows you the name you can change what name the tagger has it shows you player profile we're not really going to talk about that remove profile name if I hold down the shift key and assign a name here in a second I'll show you how to do that that's where you would go to remove that you can set what radio channel that device is on if you change this you'll have to change the radio channel of your game management system uh, that's an advanced thing that'll be covered in the advanced um, video you can ping device to check and see if it's on and you can also remove a device from a group you also have the option to restart a device remotely so if you select restart device that tagger is going to restart the programming and restart it back into the game so that is what is available if you right click on a taggers name if you hover over a taggers name hold down the shift key and double click you now have the option to put in a player's profiles name and it will show up on the game management system and on the low life score screen it will not however show up on the tagger if you do this it'll show up right here once that game is over if you want to remove all of the player profile names that you put in it you just click the R at the top of the group and it's gonna ask you are you sure you want to reset all devices yes and then it goes back to the original name this is your battery monitor it tells you how much battery life is in your taggers and that is that if I have a multiple groups I can do uh, let's say I have multiple tagger units I can have an armory and instead of having all of my taggers in the elite group I can select certain taggers and have them in my armory by selecting the less than sign and sending them to a new group. This allows these taggers only to show up on the live score screen of that group and it also allows me to have faster response time. If I have all of my taggers scanned in here, sometimes it creates a little bit of a lag because it still sends a message to those taggers that are even not on. If I wanted to add more game types, I have two options. I can go to New Game Design, which will come up with the default stuff of 150 life points, 17 points of damage, and those settings, or I can work from my set of settings that I normally run with if I go to default group right click now I have the option of starting here and I can change this setting I can change it to let's say 007 100 life points put in my 007 settings which is the one shot one kill game Click save. Now I have a 007 game and I still have my original default game. If you create a game and you want to delete it, you can right click and delete it. And that game will go away. Now I just have the games that I have created. I hope this has been informative. 
for your viewing pleasure. A couple things before I leave. If someone comes along and clicks the X of a group, you will lose those taggers and everything that is in that group will be not be stored in your game management system and you'll have to rescan them. So please do not ignore this warning unless you really want to. Also, if you want to prevent uh, fast clicking, you can select warn before action and anything you do in the game management system, it will ask you, are you sure you want to restart or are you sure you want to end game? So that just adds a little extra slow down cautionary tale of saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this? I hope this has been informative on how to set up your game management system. This is the first video of probably multiple videos and we will get into the more advanced features in the near future. Once again, this is Josh with Elite Laser Tag Equipment. I'm very glad to be able to support you. If you have any questions, please email me at EliteLaserTagHotline at gmail.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.